Welcome to the 700 Club, and thanks so much for joining with us. Israel is apologizing for the airstrike that killed seven aid workers yesterday. The IDF says the strike was a mistake that followed a misidentification and it's thoroughly investigating the incident. Meanwhile, Iran continues to threaten retaliation against Israelis for an attack that killed two of its generals. Israel's defense chief warns that anyone who hits Israel will pay a heavy price. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. This morning, the IDF chief of staff addressed the tragedy that took the lives of a team of international workers from World Central Kitchen as they returned from an aid delivery in Gaza. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. This incident was a grave mistake. Israel is at a war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu personally spoke with some of the leaders of the countries the victims were from. This happens in war. We're checking this thoroughly. We're in touch with the governments and we will do everything for this not to happen again. In the U.S., the White House is expressing outrage over how dangerous it is for aid workers in Gaza. More than 200 aid workers have been killed in this conflict, making it one of the worst for aid workers in recent history. This incident is emblematic of a larger problem and evidence of why distribution of aid in Gaza has been so challenging. Meanwhile, the Israeli military continues to prepare for its controversial invasion of Rafah, Hamas's last stronghold but also temporary home to more than a million Gazan refugees. While the Biden administration opposes the invasion, former Vice President Mike Pence says it's a necessity. Israel has no choice but to invade Rafah and hunt down and destroy Hamas once and for all. Rather than criticize Israel, Pence said Americans should fully support its war efforts against enemies sworn to wipe it off the map. If the Palestinians laid down their weapons right now and released all hostages, we'd have peace. But if Israelis laid down their weapons, we'd have no Israel. On another front, Israel is bracing for Iran retaliating after a top Iranian general and his aide were killed by a missile strike in Syria that's being blamed on Israelis. But Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant warns whoever hits Israel will pay a heavy price. We operate everywhere, every day, in order to prevent our enemies from gaining strength and in order to make it clear to anyone who acts against us, all over the Middle East, that the price for action against Israel will be a heavy one. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, while the world is calling for more aid deliveries to Gaza, Israel says it's doing everything in its power to help more trucks cross the border. Ephraim Graham has more on that story from our CBN newsroom. Ephraim? Gordon, as relief groups warn of critical food shortages in Gaza, Israeli officials say the shipments are getting in. CBN's Julie Stahl has this report from the Karem Shalom border crossing. Israel insists it is facilitating the movement of goods into the Gaza Strip. Colonel Elad Gorin is in charge of the team monitoring and coordinating humanitarian aid deliveries. He says Israel is working to expand delivery and is attempting to do so by adding resources and having staff work longer hours. Israel is doing everything it can to mitigate the humanitarian consequences of Hamas's action in the Gaza Strip. The passage behind me leads to the gate to the Gaza Strip. Before the war, there were about 70 food trucks a day going from Karim Shalom through that gate into Gaza. Now there's about 110 humanitarian aid trucks a day taking food into the Gaza Strip. In case of who is getting it, there are thousands of people. Hamas is not with uniform. There are civilians. We are moving trucks to the civilians. And the civilians are getting the food and hopefully that will be a, a continuous process, mostly with the UN organizations and not other. Oh, and they, I hope that the UN will take responsibility over their uh, steps. Gorin says there's no limit on the amount of aid allowed in and blames any problems on the other side of the crossing. While we could see trucks entering and dropping off goods, piles of supplies waited to be distributed. 
Often, there is hundreds of trucks worth of aid waiting on the Gazan side to be picked up. That is the biggest obstacle to aid reaching Gaza in need. Even so, Goran tells CBN News aid groups keep asking for more without any specifics on how much is truly needed. Just keep saying more, and it doesn't matter if we will pass 1,000 trucks here and they won't able to collect it, they will say that there is a humanitarian crisis. Israel maintains 99% of the trucks go through after an inspection. The rest are held back to remove any questionable or harmful materials. The trucks that are rejected are sent back for repackaging because they contain materials that Hamas can use for their terrorist activities. These problems aren't new. In 2016, CBN News saw the complex realities of operating the Kerem Shalom crossing. Ami Shaked, coordinator at the time, told us they lived and worked under constant threat of attack. This crossing point had a bad history with attacks. In 2008, it was totally destroyed by attack of Hamas groups. In 2012, he was attacked by Jihad Global from Egypt, and Egypt is not far away from here, it's 100 meters. And between these things, he was attacked by rockets and mortars from Gaza side. Shaked also revealed how attempted smuggling of materials for Hamas existed back then. I can tell you that uh, in the last months, months, we kept here uh, two kinds of important chemicals, Let's say that they're enough for 5,000 rockets. Israel also claimed Hamas would divert concrete shipments meant for rebuilding Gaza to construct the terrorists' attack tunnels. We found our cement on tunnels underground inside Gaza. Despite the obstacles, Israel says it remains committed to getting humanitarian aid to the people of Gaza as the conflict with Hamas continues. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Karim Shalom Crossing, Israel. Here at home, astronomers, scientists, and much of America have this Monday, April 8th, circled on their calendars. That's when a total solar eclipse is expected to pass over parts of the U.S. from southern Texas to the east coast of Maine. CBN's Paul Petit shows us how people are preparing for the event and how eclipses were interpreted during the Bible times. I am excited. I am. It can be a spectacle like no other. We're all in. Yeah, should be a great day. And right now, it's all the buzz. We're going to make a day of it. Maybe the weekend. Eclipse mania is sweeping the nation. It's pretty dramatic. Uh, a total solar eclipse is a very uh, unique event because the moon, by a strange coincidence, happens to be exactly the same apparent size in our sky as the sun. Of course, the moon's much smaller than the sun, but it's also a lot closer, and it's just at precisely the right distance that it blocks out the sun while leaving the area immediately around the sun, which means that we get to see the solar atmosphere called the corona. Five major U.S. cities will be in the path of totality. That's the 115-mile-wide track falling under the moon's central shadow. Not only, of course, does it get dark because the body of the sun is no longer visible, uh, and even noticeably colder, but we have this remarkable display. And uh, it's often said that animals like birds will be fooled into thinking that night has fallen quite quickly. The roughly four minute spectacle has had some state leaders preparing for months. We're expecting about a million extra people from that Thursday night, the fourth through uh, Tuesday, the ninth. As a result, many schools in Arkansas and other states are canceling classes. Texas officials are even warning residents to top off their gas tank and stock up on food. In Ohio, the governor signed an executive order to increase staffing for emergency management. They're all treating the April late eclipse like a major travel holiday. Any way you cut it, the interstates and highways are going to be crowded. More than 31 million people will be in the path of totality when the eclipse passes over North America. As exciting as it is for us today, eclipses took on a much different tone in ancient times. The ancient people saw celestial phenomenon as omens. Using a dating system that intersects NASA data with the ancient Assyrian calendar, associates for Bible research say it shows an eclipse passed over Nineveh in mid-8th century B.C. That event was preceded and followed by a series of natural disasters. And lo and behold, what does the Bible show us? Immediately after this, a renegade prophet named Jonah shows up 
and he's preaching repentance at a time when they would be open to it that normally they wouldn't because of the omen. Stripling says the same dating method shows a celestial spectacle happening in 33 AD on April the 3rd. Approximately the same time, the Gospels record the earth turning dark the day of Jesus' crucifixion. Picture this. As the stone is, is rolling to, to seal the tomb, on the horizon, the moon is beginning to appear, and guess what? It's a lunar eclipse. Listen, ancient people would have, would have been powerfully impacted by this. However you feel the impact from this event, countless people worldwide will have an eye to the sky April 8 to see something that has been drawing awe since time began. I've got to get some glasses. I don't know where to get them. Paul Petit, CBN News. Any day's a good day to pair those glasses with a sermon of repentance, Gordon. Yes, it is. But the, the, the moon and the sun are signs, and you can read that in the Bible. It's in chapter 1 of the first book, Genesis, and it's verse 14, that these things are signs for us, and, and signs for years and for days and for months and for seasons. There's also the sign of uh, when, the, when the sun no longer gives forth its light and the moon no longer gives forth its light. Uh, that's a sign that Jesus says we should look to the heavens for our redemption draweth nigh. I've been in the path of totality. It, it was long ago. I was just a child and we were living on a farm and uh, all nature just went crazy when, when the sun no longer shone. It was amazing how the animals reacted. The birds and the, all the, the farm animals just were uh, stunned that this was going on and they went into a panic. So if, if you're in the path of totality, look around you as, as it's happening and just see how nature responds to it. Realize, though, that the moon is a sign, the sun is a sign, the days are a sign, and in that, the day draweth nigh for our redemption. Okay. Ashley? You got some glasses? You got to check it out? I'm the, I, I, I don't look at the sun. That, that's <laughs> Right, no. but, you, but we got to get glasses in order to do that. So I got to make sure I get some glasses, too, because here we can partially see it, yeah, right? We're going we're gonna to be... Yeah. I've forgotten what the word is. Is like a number or something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's so interesting. Powerful stuff. Well, in Myanmar, some call it Burma, but uh, they call it Myanmar, the military government is cracking down on ethnic minorities and Christians. One American aid group is risking their lives to help the victims get out of harm, harm's way. Well, Chuck Holton brings us this exclusive report from the front line. Deep in the mountains of eastern Burma, gunfire echoes through Christian villages. The Burmese army is driving thousands from their homes as it seeks to crush opposition to the 2021 coup. Rebel armies, though, are slowly liberating village after village. Right now, we are attacking to Laiko, the capital city of the Korean state. Before that, uh, the Burma army put in their troops around that Laiko because uh, Laiko is the, the main command center of all their troops. So we are right now attacking to Laiko, their main center. So we are pushing them back. So they have to fall back all the time. For years, the Burmese army has committed atrocities against civilians, deliberately targeting churches and other religious sites. The people living in these villages in the mountains of Burma still live pretty primitive lives. You can tell by the huts that they live in. They're just made of split bamboo. Most of them don't have electricity or running water. And so you might be surprised to find a giant Baptist church built on the top of the hill in this very remote place in the mountains of Burma. But that's because most of these hill tribes are actually Christian. They were converted to Christianity by the very first Baptist missionary, Adoniram Judson, in the end of the 19th century. And that's one of the reasons why there has been this conflict ongoing between them and the Buddhist military junta who controls the country. 
This church and this village lost over 100 homes burned and destroyed and over 100 landmines found, including in the church property, including in the church. Despite the danger, the NGO called the Free Burma Rangers is using its resources to evacuate civilians and deliver life-saving relief. This is the town of Pasang. The rebel army has managed to push out the Burmese military over the last several days, and that's created a safe space for the these uh, villagers to leave, but they've been afraid to do so. So they've been taking shelter in this hospital in the center of Pasang. And uh, now the Free Burma Rangers are here with their trucks to help them get out. During the mission, Burmese MiG fighter jets supplied by Russia hunted the group. So we have a recon plane flying over, trying to find this convoy, I'm pretty sure. We've been going this all day. Normally when they fly, they'll, after that will come airstrikes, airplanes. And then these planes can also drop mortars. Many of the minority groups have taken up arms, resisting the dictatorship for decades. Now their aging weaponry is no match for the junta's modern arsenal. So this is an M16A1 rifle. And you can tell how old it is by looking at all the bluing is rubbed off of the upper here. And these things were probably left behind at the end of the Vietnam War. That's how old they are. Even with limited resources, rebel armies are methodically taking ground. We see that directly from my own walking experiences. And we see that from our team's reports in other areas. But every area I've been to, without exception, Burma has lost control. Look at this highway we're driving on. This highway goes all the way to major city of Tangu and eventually Mandalay. This is a major thoroughfare. We're on it. Could not do this two months ago. We are building our administrative system back there. We got a police. We got a other supported departments it's, uh, to able to govern. We are creating uh, a new society which has like just peaceful freedom, like democracy. As the conflict rages, these resilient ethnic groups remain determined to resist military rule, and many believe the goal is finally in reach. From Burma, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. Well, all the way back in 1995, I was in a Karenni refugee camp. They were fleeing from Slork. That's the uh, Burmese army and, and the indiscriminate killing that was going on. There was uh, an ethnic cleansing trying to happen on a massive scale to wipe out the Karen, the Karenni tribes. And they uh, fled into refugee camps uh, in Thailand. Uh, this conflict has been going on for decades and it's time for it to stop. The international community seems to be turning a blind eye to it. And, and repeatedly turning that blind eye. Let us pray for Burma. Let's pray for the people there, uh, that they would have true freedom. Uh, the, the military has seized control again and again and again. They've made various attempts to have a democracy, to have an elected government, and the military always comes in. Uh, it's, it, there's just a huge amount of corruption uh, and a lot of drug money involved as well. But let's pray. God can make a difference, and he wants to make a difference. In that wonderful history of Adoniram Judson coming, uh, he was imprisoned in, in Rangoon for years, and his translator was a Koran. And his translator was his convert, and his translator went on to convert the entire group of Koran and Koreni. So you can go there, and you can see these Baptist churches with Baptist hymnals, and it's singing songs that I grew up with. It's amazing to witness. It's amazing to see. So let's pray for our Christian brothers and sisters that they would be free and be able to worship the Lord freely. Ashley. The power of beliefs. Dr. Josh Axe says that that might be the single greatest factor in determining our future. And that's why he's developed a new prescription for a healthy mindset. Dr. Josh Axe is well known for the health advice he gives through books, TV, and a new podcast. He's passionate about helping people heal and prevent illness. In a new book, Dr. Axe deals with the mental side of wellness. He says a healthy mindset can dramatically improve our lives. 
in Think This, Not That, Dr. Axe shares his own struggle with negative beliefs and how we all can overcome them. All right, well, we got the awesome Dr. Josh Axe in the house, live in studio. Dr. Axe, thank you so much for being with us today. Actually, th thanks for having me. Of course, it's so nice to meet you in person. I want to, before we get into the book, I, I, it, for those who don't know who you are, how did you even get into, you know, alternative medicine? Because there's a really powerful story with that. Yeah, well, I got into natural medicine because a crisis in my own family. My mom was diagnosed with, with breast cancer, and mm -hmm. I remember growing up, her losing all of her hair and... Uh, and just looking at all the extreme side effects of the chemotherapy, she eventually became cancer free, mm. but then was diagnosed again 10 years later. Wow. At that point, I'd become a doctor and I walked her through how to heal using food as medicine, biblical medicine of prayer and a number of things. Mm. And uh, God healed her completely yeah. uh, through, 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 through a lot of those principles. And so that's what start, had me uh, eventually start my functional medicine practice yeah. and then start my online website mm -hmm. and write, write a number of books. But it was through, through, through that experience. Oh my goodness. And you obviously are a believer. Um, talk about that moment when you really decided to walk with Jesus like did you grow up in a Christian home I did I was blessed to have two Christian parents I okay. went through a to a Christian uh, uh, school through eighth grade and so my parents really instilled in me these these biblical beliefs mm. and you know I and, and and they've impacted my life in such a big way if people have ever read my books or watched my my new podcast or yeah. anything I've put out I think they'll see a lot of sort of biblical principles and narratives yes. throughout throughout everything that I do. Definitely. Well, you obviously, you know, you talk about healthy eating, natural remedies, alternative medicine, and yet you've come out with a book that talks about the mind. Why come out with a book talking about think this, not that, and about beliefs? You know, one of the things I found over the years in helping people heal is that the most important thing is not food as medicine, it's mindset medicine. And we know that this is very biblical, right? I mean, mm -hmm. Jesus is constantly talking about people in the Bible. It's your belief, it's your faith that heals you, but it's, it's our beliefs. Right. So that's so important. You know, I'll go back a little ways uh, into, there's something called the placebo effect. Mm -hmm. And back during World War I, uh, the, the main physician ran out of morphine. And so there were all of these wounded soldiers who had lost limbs and had major pain. And because they ran out of morphine, he just said, well, I'm going to give them a sugar pill. Mm. We found many of those people experienced uh, complete pain relief. It'd wow. be exact same as if they were taking morphine. And we see in clinical studies today, if people simply believe they're going to be healed, in many cases, mm. they will be healed. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things, I, I wrote this book uh, and started to really teach my patients mindset medicine because I found that was the number one factor in them healing. There's something called neuroplasticity, where if you believe you're going to heal, your brain will start creating new neural pathways yeah. and send healing and growth factors to the area of your body that's injured or diseased, and so your body amazing. will actually start healing and repairing itself. And so it's really, we can awaken this power of healing yeah. through the power of belief. Absolutely, and obviously we have to talk about your personal journey with this. Mm -hmm. What I find is so crazy and amazing is that as you started to write this book, something really traumatic happened to you where you became paralyzed. You, like you could yeah. not walk. Yeah. Please tell us that whole experience and what happened to you. Well, it's so crazy because I, I was on the show just a few, you know, a few years yeah. ago. And then about a year later, uh, I, I, had, I had injured my back a little bit lifting weights. And I decided to go in and get something called stem cell therapy, which, by the way, the first time really helped. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I've got a little bit of a nagging issue. I'm going to go and do this again. It's a natural procedure using your body's own bone marrow and uh, blood. Mm -hmm. And so I went in, got injected. A few days later, I started feeling worse and worse. At, three months later, I woke up, and then one, one day I just couldn't walk. The pain was so severe. I went in, I had to have an ambulance come pick me up. Oh my gosh. And it was so hard. I had a three year old daughter, she's crying and upset. What's wrong with daddy? And so go in, get an MRI, yeah. and they come back and say, You have a spinal infection. And they said, The problem is the infection is now in your disc, it's actually in the bone, and then there's an abscess by the spinal cord. I met with the doctor, and he said, Josh, best case scenario, you're going to pain the rest of your life, and you'll be the first person to know when bad weather comes through. He said, Worst case scenario is you're going to be permanently disabled. And this was about wow. a year and a half ago. Wow. And, um, and so, you know, for about 24 hours, actually, there were emotions I'd never experienced before. I felt despair. I felt yeah. hopelessness. And then the next day, I woke up and I realized this isn't serving me. Mm -hmm. And I know that God is my healer. I don't need to focus on the diagnosis. I need to focus on the great physician. Mm -hmm. And so I started thinking about and, and going and, and realizing that 
I need to see myself in the future completely healed. I need to see myself throwing my baby girl up in the air again in the pool. Yeah. I need to see myself completely 100% healed. And so I started visualizing myself in that way. I started thanking God and praising him for healing me. Mm. and started fostering the beliefs. And I knew both the science of neuroplasticity yeah. that my body will send more of those healing signals when I believe certain things. Mm -hmm. And I knew those biblical principles. Yeah. And so I did that. And let me say this, it was, a, it was a total of 10 months I didn't walk at all and then two months on a walker. So I did not walk on my own for a full wow. year. In fact, this time last year, I was unable to walk. Oh my gosh. And I just started visualizing and praying to God and believing I would be healed. In fact, one of the things I wanted to be able to do is my sister-in-law asked me to officiate their wedding. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be able to do that. I wanted to be, be well enough to play with my daughter again. And yeah. then I was able to do that um, after about a year. And so it's been about 10 months since then. And here's the, here's the amazing thing is, is that I'm already better than the best that the doctor said I could oh possibly gosh, be. I don't have pain on. every day. I'm back working out and yeah. back, you know, teaching these principles, but, wow. but it's, you know, it's so much of it, it's through the power of, of, of belief and mindset. Right. And it's just so amazing. You have literally lived this out. Yes. 100%. I mean, what about those days where just fear and doubt seem to just be overwhelming your mind? Like, what did you do in those moments to overcome that and still have faith that you will be able to walk again? Well, I think there's a couple things. Number one, I fixed my eyes on Jesus. Mm -hmm. I know he's, you know, he, he's my healer. And so praying daily yeah. and, and really looking at God's promises. You know, the other thing I would say, I had a friend come in when I was in bed and he said to me, he said, Josh, what, what have you been doing? And I said, well, I'm actually writing a new book and I'm doing this in business and I'm wow. doing this. And he goes, if I were you, I'd just be eating Cheetos and drinking Mountain Dew all day. <laughs> yeah. And I said, well, you know, for me, I have so much purpose in my life. Like I know that God has called me to do something. Right. Yeah. And that's a lot of what I hit on this book is helping people find their purpose, mm. helping people get clear, overcoming limiting beliefs. I mean, that was right. a huge thing. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of people today, Ashley, that I saw in practice and recently I've talked to mm -hmm. that they have something holding them back in their life. It could be they don't feel beautiful or smart or, or maybe a doctor's told them you have to live with this condition or be on this pill the rest of your life. And oftentimes we believe in what I go through in the book, how to shatter those limiting beliefs, create new empowering beliefs yeah. that help us heal, that help us grow, that help us become the best mm. we can be. That's so powerful. You also talk about 12 mindset shifts and that's how the book is like yeah. organized. It's like each chapter is a mindset. Um, give us, give some like practical examples of what those mind, mind shift, mindset shifts, that's a tongue tie. Yeah. What, what are some of those? Yeah, well, one of them is uh, focus on uh, not accomplishing things, but becoming somebody great. We tend to have mm -hmm. a to-do list. I'm gonna do this, 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 and this versus no, I'm going to become more generous more kind, more wise, yeah. more like Christ. I remember when I was in youth group growing up, I had this WWJD bracelet. Yeah, yeah, what would yeah. Jesus do? But it's <laughs> thinking about who could I become? And, and, and it, what reminded me of this is um, I had my grandfather lived to be 96 years old. He was a huge fan of Pat and the show. Oh my gosh, that's and, awesome. Yeah, amazing man. Yeah. And you know, when I was at his funeral, everybody started standing up and saying, Howard saved my marriage. Howard was my best friend. Howard, And I think I realized at that time, that success in life is not what I accomplish, it's who I become as a person. That's mm. one mind shift I get into, uh, unlimiting your beliefs. So going from limiting beliefs to unlimiting beliefs, mm -hmm. which can help people experience yeah. healing and breakthrough. I go from aimless to being purpose-driven. Yeah. I, I really get into identity in the book. I get mm -hmm. into how to build positive perseverance and mindset and, and overcome anything in life, including those hardships. And so those are, those are a few. Yeah. Well, it, talk about, uh, you know, if you get the book there, you also have some videos that you're giving out for free that are just going to help yeah. go hand in hand with the book. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Well, I'll say one, this is the best book I've ever written. And so if you've <laughs> ever written an article or, or book I've written, this is the best, because again, I wrote it when I was in this position of not being able to walk for yeah. a full year, Gosh. poured my heart and soul into it. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, in this book, I also have a workbook. I also have a video series. I also have a load of bonuses wow. and special interviews with some awesome Christian people. Yeah. And so if people go today and get the book on Amazon or anywhere, mm -hmm. they can then go to joshax.com 
and then just say, hey, I got the book, and then I'm going to send you hundreds of dollars worth of free content for wow. free mm. for anyone who, who gets the book today. That is so awesome. Man, I wish we had more time. Thank you, Dr. Axe, for just everything that you're doing. Thank you for pouring out your heart and soul in this book. And we just, I, I know so many audience members are praising God for the healing testimony that you have, and I know it's touching so many lives, so well, thank you. Well, I know so many people prayed for me, and I'm so mm. grateful for it. And just remember, the power of belief, as it talks about in the Bible, is the most powerful form of medicine. Yes, yes, and amen. You're preaching. <laughs> You should add that to your resume. All right. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, Dr. Axe's latest book is called Think This, Not That, and it's available nationwide. Highly recommend you pick it up. And welcome back to the 700 Club for this CBN News Break. We begin in Taiwan with the strongest earthquake in nearly 25 years. It's left at least nine people dead and more than 300 injured. The U.S. Geological Survey measured the quake at 7.4. It has hit strongest in the eastern city of Huala and shaking buildings off their foundations. Residents had to be helped out of the windows. About 95 miles away, the capital of Taipei experienced some shaking but no major damage. The quake and aftershocks triggered more than 20 landslides, damaging roads, bridges and tunnels. Back here in the U.S., a unique spring tradition that looks like a sweet scene out of a movie. Thousands of marshmallows raining down from the skies over Detroit. It is the annual Great Marshmallow Drop on the ground. Hundreds of children try to snatch up as many of the sweet treats as possible while in the air. A helicopter dumps about 15,000 marshmallows. The event is for everyone, including those with special needs for whom there is a second drop. Children collect the marshmallows in exchange for prizes like coloring books and even passes to the water park. I want to remind you, you can always get the latest from CBN News by going to our website. It's cbnnews.com. Old, run down, and barely livable. Diana's house is so rotten she's scared it will fall on her. Her single mom has no money for repairs, and she barely makes enough to feed her family one meal a day. Six-year-old Diana lives with her mom, grandma, and little brother in Peru. She told us they often go hungry. When mom doesn't sell anything, I only eat once a day. And then I go to bed. The family's house is another concern. It's old, run down, and barely habitable. Everything is rotten. It scares me. I think it will fall on me and my little brother. Diana's mommy, Veth, who is a single parent, is afraid for their safety, too. When it rains, sometimes the wind lifts the sheet metal from the roof. Then the whole house shakes. The kids wake up and are scared. Yvette supports them by selling a few vegetables each day, not enough for food and repairs. I feel helpless. I can't fix the house. I don't have the money. I'm afraid for them. So Operation Blessing built the family a new sturdy house with bedrooms, kitchen, and a bathroom. We also furnished it with beds, tables, and chairs. Operation Blessing gave us a safe house to live in. Now we sleep well and even have a nice place to eat our meals together. Thank you for my pretty house. We then helped Yvette to expand her business with lots of fruits and vegetables to sell out of their new home. I am selling a lot more. I even have money to grow my business. Mama has a big business now. Now I can eat three times a day. Thank God who put wonderful people in our path to help us. Thank you so much. Sometimes it's hard to believe that there are individuals and families and mothers and fathers and children who live in conditions like this. When we live in a country where there's almost like too much, there's just so much around us. But I'm telling you, when we link arms together, we can do so much more than we can apart. And if you're watching this and there's just a tug on your heart and you're not a CBN 700 Club partner, I would encourage you to become one today. A portion of every gift goes into the work of Operation Blessing 
and Operation Blessing International, which helps provide food and shelter and clean water and life-changing surgeries for, for people like you just saw in that story, not just in South America, but literally all around the world and also right here in the United States. So if you want to make a change, a true change in the lives of individuals, and you want to do it in the name of Jesus, become a CBM partner today. It's really simple. All you have to do is give us a call. That number on your screen is totally free. It's 1-800-700-7000 and say, I just want to become a part of the 700 Club and all that you guys are doing around the world. You can also become a partner by going to CBN.com or by doing my personal favorite way of giving, which is texting CBN to the number 71777. When you do that, you're going to get a text message with the link. Click that link and it's going to send you over to our giving page where from there you can choose at which level you would like to become a CBN 700 Club partner. At whatever level you choose to become a partner, we're actually going to send you something in return. This is our way of saying thank you for linking arms with us and making a difference around the world. This is How to Believe for Healing. It's Gordon's latest teaching. It just talks about how to believe God to do the impossible, to do the miraculous in your life and in someone else's life. Um, he shares his personal testimony. I share my personal testimony. Testimony. You not only get this DVD, but you also get the workbook that just solidifies everything that's talked about in the DVD. You also get three teachings that Gordon has done. You can stream them on any smart device, your phone, your TV. You can listen to it. You can watch it. So if you want all of this, I encourage you to become a 700 Club partner. And we actually had a viewer comment. They sent this in uh, just actually talking about the teaching. They said, this video teaching is excellent. Praise the Lord. My wife, Sharon, and I are both believing for healing. We have yet to go through the workbook, but I know it will grow our faith in Jesus. And that is our prayer and belief. So again, if you want the teaching, you want the workbook, you want the streaming teachings and you want to help people in the name of Jesus around the world, become a CBN partner today. Call us 1-800-700-7000, text CBN to 71777 or go to our website at CBN.com. Gordon? Well, problems speaking, unable to read and trouble concentrating. Bonnie experienced all these symptoms and more after she took a bad fall from her bike. My name is Bonnie Milks. I'm a very lively almost 79 year old person. It was May 1st and I called it my May Day. And I was going to Bible study, had my backpack on my back with my Bible and stuff in it. And my backpack swung over my shoulder and I, without thinking, you know, grabbed for it. And then when I grabbed for it, toppled to the pavement, then pinned my leg under the bike. But when I hit the curb, the helmet pushed down and it lacerated right here between my, between my eyes, you know, missed my eyes, thank the dear Lord, and uh, just lacerated right there, and it was bleeding terribly, and I spent a long afternoon in the ER and got the CAT scan, got the x-ray, got the stitches, and there were four of them right across here, so I was having problems speaking fluently. It was always blocked. I, like the words had to run over an obstacle course in order to come out from my brain to my mouth. And uh, it just seemed like it was so hard to read, just so hard to absorb the printed page. I realized I was having problems. Well, I was watching the 700 Club, and uh, when they got to the healing part, Gordon was saying, there's someone who was in a... Uh, there's someone, you've been involved in an accident, and I don't know if it was a motorcycle or a bicycle, but what I'm getting is the image, you were wearing a helmet, and this is how you'll know it's you, that the helmet on your forehead left a, um, a mark from where you hit. You're dealing with a lot of issues in your brain as a result of this accident. God is healing you. He is restoring your mental function. He's going to give it all back to you just as if it never happened. You're healed now in Jesus' name. So I knew that was me, and I just thought, all right, Lord, I received that, and then I went to bed. When I woke up the next morning, it just, everything was different. I'm not fighting to get the words out. My balance was straight. My, I could read anything and absorb it. I could listen and focus, and uh, it was just a totally different world. I'm very thankful. It was it was like a whole new world again. You know, I didn't realize how limited I had been for the last five months. It just reaffirmed to me that he was taking care of me. 
that he is always faithful. He doesn't change. He knows when you don't know, and his plans are always good. His plans are always good. They're always good for you. And you can, you can take heart in his word. His word has caused us to hope. And here's a wonderful promise. you find it in Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases. Now, I didn't know Bonnie. I didn't know she had been in an accident. I didn't know anything about that, but God sure did. And he wanted to communicate very specifically to her to give her the faith to believe that he heals all your diseases. Let God do that for you today. Let him be very specific. Realize that he loves you tenderly. He's not some distant God. He's right there with you. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He wants to help. That's the name of the Holy Spirit, the helper. He wants to comfort. God is the God of all comfort. He wants to deliver. He wants to set captives free. He wants you to have life and have it more abundantly. He wants to forgive you for everything you've ever done wrong, ever. He won't hold any of it to you. You can say, well, I have this horrible past. He's not concerned about that. What he's concerned about is your wonderful future. Turn to that. Turn to that wonderful future, what he can do with you, uh, how he can take care of all of that. And then by his stripes, by his wounds, we were healed. He took it all. He took every sickness, every pain, Every problem, he took it all on the cross. Why did he take that? Because he loves us. And he took it so we wouldn't have to take it anymore. We wouldn't have to bear it. If he's borne our infirmities, isn't that wonderful? It means that we don't have to bear it anymore. He's done it all. When did it happen? 2,000 years ago. So put into practice what Jesus tells us in Mark chapter 11. When you stand praying, when you believe that you have already received, then you will have it. And it's that belief, that rest in it, that it's already happened 2,000 years ago. And because of the finished work of, of Christ on the cross, I can walk free. Now, Ashley and I are going to pray. Before we pray, we want to encourage you. Here's some more miracles. I mean, God is a God of miracles. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What Jesus did 2,000 years ago in three years of ministry, he is still doing today. The miracles just keep multiplying because he is the God of multiplication. Here's Rose from Mississippi. She felt sore in her stomach area starting around her navel. She also felt nauseated at times. Soon her pain level increased along with some bleeding. Well, one night, Rose fell asleep on the couch, and when she woke up, the 700 Club was on. And then Ashley said, there's a lady watching right now that's been having some stomach problems around her navel area, and the Lord is healing her. Rose said to herself, this is for me. Well, throughout the day, she kept thanking God by faith for her healing. The following morning, she got up and realized she wasn't hurting. There wasn't any blood, no nausea. The symptoms never returned. Wow. She gives God all the glory. Praise God. Here's another amazing miracle. This is Tamara of Port Washington, New York. She suffered chronic back pain for years. It got so bad that it hurt to move. She would lie on the wooden floor since it was the one place she felt somewhat better. To get up, she had to roll over and push herself up slowly with her hands. She was watching the 700 Club one day when she heard Gordon say, there's someone and you have bad back pain. You have to lie on the floor and push with your arms to get up. For some reason, I'm hearing push-ups. Get up and do what you couldn't do. God is healing you. Tamara knew it was for her. She jumped up and raised her hands in praise to God. She hasn't had any more back pain since. Come on, let's right. go. Be encouraged with these testimonies. And I, I believe faith is an act. I mean, that you can get into the Greek. It's a, it's a noun, but it's also a verb. So when you act your faith, you, you, show, you show yourself, you certainly show God that you believe. So in an act of faith, lay your hand on that area of the body that needs healing. 
Ashley and I will join in agreement with you. Here's what the Bible says. When two or more agree touching anything, it shall be done for them by my Father in heaven. So you touch, we'll be, we'll be your two or more, and we'll agree with you, and God will do all the rest. Lord God Almighty, we come into agreement, and for everyone reaching a hand on that area of the body that needs healing, we join with them. We say out loud, be healed and be made whole. By the stripes of a risen Savior, I am healed. I am delivered from all pain, all infirmity, all disease. Be gone from my body now. I receive the health and the restoration and the life that Jesus mm -hmm. wants to give me. I receive it all you, Jesus. in Jesus' name. There's someone you're laying your right hand on your right kidney on your back. God has healed that kidney. In the name of Jesus, no more pain, no more problem, no more uh, malfunction. In the name of Jesus, be totally healed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Amen. I also hear no more kidney stones in the name of Jesus. Those who have been suffering with that, men, women, young, old, God is healing that for you right now in the name of Jesus. There's somebody else. You're literally like jumping around because you, you're just so filled with the Holy Spirit. You're praising God for the issue with your right ankle. You're able to jump. You're able to move around like you haven't been able to in a while. God is healing that right ankle issue for you right now. Just continue to jump around and praise God. Thank you. Jesus. There's someone you've had problems with your esophagus and the lining has been you know, re repeatedly irritated. You've had a scope and it's found um, irregular shaped cells and you're, and you're greatly discouraged by it. In the name of Jesus, may every cell in your body return to normal. Mm -hmm. May all pain, all discomfort leave you. May any problem sealing off that esophagus be healed now. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. If you've been healed, share that report. Call us, 1-800-700-7000. If you need prayer, we're here for you, and we're here for you 24 hours a day. We want to stand with you in prayer. Keep this verse in mind. Ask, and you will receive, that your joy may be full. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.